This is part 7 on the FOA series of videos on instructor training and certification. In this video, we're going to talk about teaching labs, helping students develop hands-on skills through well-taught laboratory courses. The setup of your lab is very important for efficiently teaching a course. You need, of course, plenty of space, enough space for everybody to work comfortably, and lab tables big enough for a pair of students to work together because they can help each other. You need equipment, the tools and test equipment, to be shared by each pair of students at each table. You need consumable supplies, cables, connectors, splices, adhesives for termination, polishing film. Whatever you need to teach the hands-on courses can be more efficiently used if you prepackage it for each pair of students because as they work in pairs, they can share equipment, share supplies, work together, and help each other. But the most important thing for every lab that you teach is safety. And we've developed a set of safety rules that you must follow. You should read and follow those rules in the lab manual and show the FOA YouTube safety lecture to all your students before they engage in labs. Everyone participating in a lab must wear safety glasses. That includes the instructor. You need to work on a dark surface to help spot fiber scraps, so all your tabletops should be black or have black mats on them. You should have a first aid kit available, eye wash station, and even tweezers to pull fiber shards out of your fingers if you need to. You must dispose of fiber scraps carefully, not in a wastebasket. We suggest you go get disposable cardboard containers like are used for takeout soup at delis and use those to put your fiber scraps in. Then you can seal them up with tape and dispose of them. Be careful with chemicals like cleaners, solvents, and adhesives that you use. There should be no eating or drinking in the lab. And after you're through in the lab, every student must properly clean up their lab bench and dispose of all their materials carefully. What we like to say is fiber is more than termination. Most people teach termination or splicing in their labs. But cable handling and preparation is vitally important for every student. Unless you can identify the type of cable, know how to pull it correctly, and then how to strip it and prepare it for termination or splicing, you cannot possibly be successful at termination or splicing. So we want every student to know how to handle a cable. For tools and test equipment, you'll need the tools for cable prep, termination, and splicing. For test equipment, you need a visual tracer or visual fault locator. You'll need connector inspection microscopes, not just for termination if you're polishing connectors, but also for inspecting connectors for dirt. You need an optical test source and optical power meter for insertion loss tests. And if you're doing an outside plant course, you'll probably need an OTDR. But remember that the FOA has an OTDR simulator, which you can use in class and is sometimes a more effective tool for teaching than an actual OTDR itself. Outside plant courses that teach splicing will of course need a fusion splicer and will probably need an OTDR as well as a long simulated cable plant. The FOA has an excellent lab setup under the Splicing Advanced Labs that shows you a great way to set it up using a combination of these tools where you splice with a fusion splicer and another group is testing with an OTDR to ensure the splice is good. That's why I say that you should go through the FOA specialist or advanced programs because the curriculum has lots of useful information that you can use in your classes.
The consumable supplies you need for your class will of course be determined by what you're teaching, but typically you'll need some cable to terminate and splice. You'll need connectors, adhesives, polishing film, mechanical splices, and if you're doing fusion splicing you'll need splice protectors for the fiber. You'll need a scrap disposal bin, and of course every student and the instructor needs safety glasses. For teaching termination, you should choose a representative connector. Most people either use STs or SCs, and you plan on doing at least three for each of the students in the class, plus lots of spares. You need to make sure that all your tools, like strippers, are in good working order so that the students don't have problems with the tools during the class. We recommend you bag supplies for the students, so each pair of students has a set of consumables just for the activities they'll be doing. This will make the lab move much more smoothly. Always have a handout of the steps involved, so if you're doing termination, have a handout printed showing the strip length for the cable involved. And of course the instructor should have a bucket of spares for those students who fail so they have extra connectors, for example. One of the things we recommend you do for termination is start with a patch cord. And the students can test it with a power meter and source before they start the termination then they can cut it in half and terminate each end. They each get a half of the cable and they only have to terminate one connector before they can test it again. And that's because we recommend that every time you make a connector you test it so that you know that you're doing the termination properly. Once you ensure that that connector is properly done by testing it, you can cut off that new connector and terminate the patch cord again. From experience we've learned that doing a fusion splicing lab can be set up to be more efficient and give the students a better basic knowledge of what they're doing. And the way you do that is have several spools of fiber and several splicers and an OTDR. Thus you have one group of students testing each splice as it's made with the OTDR and one or two other groups working on the fusion splicers. Thus the groups can work on one splicer and then move to the next and then move to the OTDR so everyone gets the experience at all three of the test stations. If you're teaching a premises cabling course one of the things you can do is create training aids like these termination boards shown on the table which can be transported around or mount a large block of plywood on the wall of the classroom where you can put punch down blocks and patch panels so that the students can actually work in an environment that's very similar to what they'll see in the field. UTP termination isn't particularly difficult but it does require some practice and the more you can make that practice look like what the real world will be, the more efficient it will be for your students. To summarize our views on teaching a lab course, use lab partners. Pair a newbie with an experienced person, for example. If someone knows how to do termination and someone doesn't, or one is more advanced than the other, Put those people together so the one with more experience can help the lesser experience. Provide enough table space and room space to spread out. Have all the equipment set up for each pair of students so that they don't have to go hunting for tools or equipment. Prepackage the consumables. Have handouts for all the exercises so they know what they're doing. But before you start, the instructor should do a demo so all the students can watch and see what they're expected to do. This is also a good use for the FOA YouTube videos where they can watch the video and then do the exercise. And above all, have patience because some people will take time to learn these skills. 
That finishes part seven on hands-on labs. We're now ready to go to part eight.